and I share all these things. I want this. I want to be very, very clear. I share all these things not for sympathy, not to play the woe is me card or the victim card or anything like that. I don't share these things for those reasons. Hello, it's July 2022, and in keeping with the theme of revisiting old topics, I thought I would revisit this topic with regards to my sharing, for example, the psychological and physical um, issues that I've been dealing with over many, many years. And it's not something that is easy to, to share because a lot of people, for example, would interpret that as a weakness where in fact it's a strength of character to be able to share the vulnerable side of say someone's character or their what they're going through and again it's not easy to to share these things now way back say around 10 years ago I started to share the effects of post-traumatic stress from the trauma that I experienced with the May 4th 2013 event and I actually even before that with the December of 2012 false allegation by the female who's central to my story I did share how that impacted me and how I lost sleep over that and everything else and I've also shared the impact of trauma over the years when dealing with for example the countless of court rulings that were unjust and how I was being railroaded and each time I would have to go to court and deal with the injustice it, it just kept hitting me hard but I endured I've also shared over the years how for example the um, having to go to jail every weekend for I think it ended up being like six months seven months and how after each weekend it really impacted me harder and harder and I even did a video where I said how it um, gave me the feeling of being raped because having to do strip searches and being violated in that way I'm not gonna get into any graphic details about that every weekend I had to deal with that plus having to deal with being there and the things that go on there it's um, well, at least for me it wasn't a walk in the park especially knowing that I shouldn't have been there and the reason why I was there and there are many people and I can't imagine what they went through but there are many people who have spent years decades 10 20 30 40 years in prison for something they didn't do and I mean I, yeah, as I said I can't even fathom something like that that type of injustice and I've shared the stress that I've been going through trying to live in the aftermath of all these things and for example not having food water gas all these things and there's so many other different things that I've had to deal with and I've also shared for example the injuries to my hands which have left me partly disabled and how that has impacted me psychologically as well as obviously physically so I've shared a lot of different things I've also shared other health issues that I've been going through even recently and it is traumatizing and I've said in other videos over many years too much by too many for too long will take its toll on even the strongest character and yet I still keep going and I re really honestly I don't know what keeps me going or why I just seem to bounce from one thing to the next and somehow just keep moving forward or trying to anyway and I share all these things and I want this I want to be very very clear I share all these things not for sympathy not to play the woe is me card or the victim card or anything like that I don't share these things for those reasons I share these things 
to show the impact of, for example, someone's efforts to truly be an insider, whistleblower, and exposer of first-hand knowledge. It's not Hollywood glamorous type of thing that a lot of people are delusional thinking that, you know, it's there's huge rewards and yeah, no, your life gets destroyed. I also share this to show what happens from the human perspective, from the human side of injustice, dealing with police, judicial, and political corruption, specifically in the city of Calgary in the province of Alberta. I just want to be very clear. I'm just going to segue for a moment. My issue has never been with all police departments everywhere, nor every single, for example, police officer. As I've said, in my career path prior to all this practicing law as agent, I had worked with these people closely, never had a problem with these people. A lot of these people were my friends, either they were still police officers or retired or whatever. And I still have friends who are, were in former law enforcement. So my issue is not a blanket over everyone. It's specific to the city of Calgary in the province of Alberta. Now I'm not stating or implying that every other police force in the world is perfect and that everyone doing these jobs are perfect, not at all. No matter what profession, you have stupid people and you have, as a descriptive, wicked people in any profession. But what we're seeing now more and more is the good people in any profession are becoming fewer. And part of that problem, and I've highlighted this, may not necessarily be a reflection of the individual's character, but it just becomes the norm. It's like, okay, well, this is how things are done. This is, you know, normal. And wickedness as a descriptive becomes accepted as, okay, this is normal. I've also highlighted the whole social justice mindset and everything else and the social conditioning of society as contributing factors to all this. But I've shared so much about the hardships and the impact psychologically and physically of my efforts. Again, not for sympathy or anything like that, but to show the human side. And it also sends a message to, for example, the good people who do bad things because it's, well, it's normal, that there's a human side to it, that in a chain reaction that, that occurs. For example, speaking strictly about myself, not only has the the efforts and the injustice impacted me personally, but everyone around me and all my friends, friends that I've known for years, friends that I truly cherish, the ones that have stuck by me through all this. I've lost a lot of friends, especially in the beginning when all this happened in May of 2013 and onward. Lost a lot of friends, specifically ones that are still, for example, in the legal professions, law enforcement, politics. I've even had um, judges as, that I knew and had as personal references and everything. So it has caused a chain reaction of events and the stress that this puts society overall on. For example, when I'm able to tap into any government resources or even nonprofit resources, it strains everything. So there's a message to these people, and I've said repeatedly over many years, there's an opportunity to correct a wrong. And I don't, I never wanted to be, and I don't want to be that person, especially that person who continues to be talking about something that happened, well, we're looking at what, over 10 years ago now, over a decade ago. I would like nothing more than to put it all behind me and just move forward. However, the situation that I'm left in, in this aftermath, makes it next to impossible. I just want to really highlight why I've shown and shared so much, I would even say embarrassing, 
moments with the whole world, with you. To show the human side of life. And I've even highlighted, for example, for those people who, for example, read official reports and whatever stated about me, and I've highlighted, just consider for a moment, and this is directed towards these people, what if I am, which I am, but what if I am innocent of all these things? And everyone has imposed injustice thinking that they're doing the right thing because of whatever false narratives and false allegations that are against me are true. They're assuming that it's true. Imagine everything that I've gone through all these years, being innocent, which I am. And I've supported everything, whether it be psychological, physical, or even the events throughout my story, I've supported it all with a plethora of independent evidence. And really, that's what I want to say. How, or why, I share what I've shared. It's not easy. It's not easy sharing my health issues that I'm currently dealing with. But I am a human being. And I've done nothing to deserve what I've been going through. Anyway, take what you will from, from this. Just wanted to revisit this particular topic again. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Listen to this and write it down if you can't remember it. You're never going to outgrow warfare. You simply must learn to fight. I hear people saying to me all the time, when is it going to get easier? When you die.